So, welcome back to another session. Um, today, a um, quite um, interesting topic, actually. So, we are going to talk about the different posting layers in AX. So, in the end, nothing else than if you have the requirement, you have kind of a parallel accounting where you, for example, just want to um, have in one layer, for example, IFRS or any kind of local accounting. Um, and on the other hand, on the second layer, for example, um, a different kind of accounting rule like US GAAP, for example. Um, well, I actually... You know, I needed to set it up quite often um, right up up to now. And when I first did it, when I had the requirement the first time, I was actually searching quite a lot of info. I was searching about information about that in the internet, and I actually found uh, nothing. <laughs> also, nothing really. Of course, I found some information, but nowhere it was shown how to set it up or how to do it actually. Um, so yeah, I quite invested at that time quite a lot of time and it's in the end my approach, so how I'm doing it because I had quite a lot of different approaches also from um, some colleagues, but in the end it was always the case that they used, um, for example, three layers for two accountings or that they used kind of dummy accounts or that they needed to do some manual posting sometimes even sometimes during the process or the other variant was that they that um, at the year end they need to do a kind of um, manual postings um, therefore I tried at that time to figure out how to do it without any manual interaction so that everything is in the end working fully automated and the correct way uh, well I think it's quite a good approach and also quite a lot of customers are using it right up to now this way also since several years and it was always working right up now and therefore I'm just showing you here my approach how I how I am normally set it up. Um, if you have any, as, as always, if you have any kind of um, inputs or any kind of remarks or feedback about this, please um, don't hesitate to um, add a comment and yeah so but let's start now um so means in the end nothing else than means nothing else than how is the logic at first so in the end i'm just going to set up two different kind of accountings within two layers so i'm going to use the current layer and i'm going to use the operations layer now this actually in the end important to distinguish between uh, the layer and the views um, so in the end, if I'm talking about the layer, it is in the end the layer in which it is going to post. So, um, for example, if I'm using here just a normal general journal and I'm just going here to the setup, then I see, well, the posting layer in which this journal is going to post is the current layer. AX offers three layers, so current operations and the tax layer. So just those three layers are here, the layers. So the current layer, red, the operations layer, green. It's a distinction between the layers and the view. If I'm talking about the views, I'm going to talk, um, I'm talking about this kind here. So you always, you know it here in the parameters you have here, those different kind of posting layer. I'm just calling it views because it is actually in the end, yeah, it is kind of a view because posting layer current is exactly the same. So it's in the end always the the local accounting so it is actually showing the current layer and which is exactly the same as the current view so current layer is equal to current view which should be the local accounting it doesn't matter if it is ifrs or any kind of other rule in the operations it is a little bit different so the operations layer if you want to see the operations layer it is not the second accounting. It is always the difference. So it always needs to be the difference between your local accounting and the US GAAP accounting, for example. So uh, in the end, always just the difference needs to be within this layer. The view itself, the view itself is in this case, not the operations view. So if I go back to AX, it is, if I want to see just the operations layer, it is not this view here, but it is the only operations view. So um, in the end, nothing else than here, just here, <laughs> only, oper only operations, which is showing just the difference between local accounting and the US GAAP accounting. If you want to have a look at the US GAAP 
accounting in the end, you always need to use, so it's always the sum from current layer plus operations layer, so the green one, which is in the end the difference between your local accounting and the US GAAP accounting. And this is called the operations view. So in AX, in the end, if I'm choosing here operations, it doesn't mean that it's showing just the layer operations. It is always showing the sum of current layer plus operations layer, which is in the end equals to your second account, second accounting, for example, the US gap. So just as a small example, so for example, it just can, it can actually, let's say, look like this. I'm going to talk about the dummy fixed asset account zero here later on. Um, so it can actually look like this. So we just don't have a look at this account here. So um, which means nothing else that we have here. Sorry, the depreciation, of course, is missing. So we're going to make an example right afterwards. So this means nothing else than in such a case where you have a, where you've done an acquisition of 100 and a depreciation of 40, your fixed asset um, value is of course then 100 minus 60, um, so uh, minus 40, so it is 60 in your local accounting. In the end, if you want, if you're, if you if you have a look at the operations, so at US gap, it would look like this that you need to summarize here 100 and you don't have a fixed asset account in the operations layer, at least in the way how I'm doing it. Um, but you have an accumulated depreciation local, so minus 40, then again, plus 40 in the operations layer, minus 60. So it means in US gap, it would be then, of course, um, 40. So the net book value in the end, 100 minus 40 plus 40 minus 60 equals to 40. Good. So I hope you understood that it's quite important to understand this logic that you always have to sum up the things here um, together. So both layer together is equal to US gap accounting and the red one, just the current layer is equal to your local accounting. I'm now actually going to show you how to set up the fixed assets because all the all the rest, well, I'm also going to show you how to post something just uh, in the balance sheet. But the interesting part and also a little bit difficult part or the part how you need to how to understand it is in the fixed assets because there you have the option actually to um, use both layer in once. Good. So let's go into AX and as always I'm going to start really from scratch more or less. Um, sorry for that. That there are they are also in the fixed assets some set accounts because I needed to. Um, I already did this whole video, but um, somehow the um, the sound didn't work, so therefore I'm just going to do it again. <laughs> Great. So um, let's start. So we need the main account. So we are just going to create the main account. So let's say here fixed assets. The fixed asset is, of course, a balance sheet account. We need to have um, a accumulated depreciation account because I'm going to set it up in the in with the indirect depreciation methodology. So again, it is a balance sheet account. You need to have a depreciation account, which is of course a profit and loss account. You need to have um, a net book, an NBV account, net book value from net book value, costs, profit and loss. We need to have um, uh, let's call it this way, a sales value from uh, disposal, disposal of fixed assets. Um, and we need to have also a kind of a dummy account, which is always zero. I just call it dummy fixed asset account for you, uh, for second layer second lay layer and I'm just adding the command always zero because this account is always and at any time um, balanced always zero so you actually don't necessarily need to have it uh, I'm using this account because otherwise there would be always there would be too many postings within in the fixed asset account 
um, because it would be always a, a, an in, out, in, out, in, in the end. And therefore, I'm just using here this account that I just have on the fixed asset account at an acquisition, just one posting, which makes it just a little bit easier to understand if you have a look at this account. Great. So um, we now have those accounts available and I'm moving now directly into the fixed assets. Good. Um, yeah, the fixed assets is also actually not yet really set up. So there is, uh, well, okay, some setup, some settings from the last thing, but in the end, there is not much to do. You can add here um, a minimal depreciation amount, blah, 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 blah. You can accept it to um, make an acquisition from the purchase orders and so on. Uh, yeah, not that interesting in here. Good. Um, we start to just create depreciation profile. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying both are actually straight line. Of course, you can use aggressive you can use anything you want and you just would just need to create some separate depreciation profiles in my case i'm just going to use straight line for both so for ifrs and for us gap the only difference is the useful life so it's just in one uh, in one it is four year and in the one other one it is for example five years so straight line uh, it is straight line service life from the calendar but i'm going to depreciate it monthly Great. Um, next would be the fixed asset groups. So we need to just the fixed asset group as always in every sub ledger. This one is the one which is controlling the main account postings. So it is controlling the fixed asset account, the accumulated depreciation account, the netbook value account and the sales value account. Good. So I just create one and call it MCH, which is called machines or whatever you like. I'm going to auto number it. I'm going to the main table just to create here um, a new, a new um, number sequence. Uh, let's call it machines for company GLSI. And then I'm going to add a constant, let's say FA, oops, FA minus the fixed S group MCH, and then it's just six digits just six digits continuous and I'm going to add it in here. Good. Okay. So we've created the fixed asset group for the moment. So um, we are going to add afterwards the value models, but we are just going to create the value models from right now. So I'm just closing here the window and I'm moving forward to the value models. Great. So I just create a new one. Um, you actually, and this is kind of the strange thing, so, um, because you need three value models, but we are just using two different kind of layers. So I'm just going to show you what I mean. So we are just going to create CURC, CUR, or let's say LOC, local gap, for example, um, the value model for the local gap. I, of course, going to depreciate it. I'm using straight line, um, yeah, I'm not going to allow netbook value higher, blah, 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 round off, leave netbook value at zero. I want to fully depreciate it and I'm using the normal fiscal calendar. Okay, we are coming back to this value model right afterwards because we need to derive different other value models out of this value model. So, but at first, of course, we need to create them. Good, so I'm also going to create um, US, so US gap. So just the second value model up to now, I guess it's quite um, clear what I'm doing. Then the next step will be a little bit stranger. Good. As I said, the US gap, now it's important here to choose the correct layer. The US gap is in the end in the operations layer. It is part of the operations layer. Therefore, I'm not going to choose here current, but I'm going to change it to operations. Also within the fiscal calendar. Good. And now maybe the a little bit strange thing, uh, because I'm actually going to use um, a reversal value model. So I'm going to, to I'm going to add here now a, a third one. I'm going to call it set. I would call it set or something because then it is from the sorting. It is at the end, and yeah, it makes it sometimes a little bit easier. And I'm going to call it R lock. No R lock. So um, reversal. Reversal of reversal of 
local in operations layer. Good. This is maybe a little bit strange um, at, if you just see it the first time, um, but this actually doing nothing else and this is kind of annoying so okay and it's but it's actually not doing nothing else than at any time every posting which is done in the value model local it is going to reverse it so it means nothing else than he's going to post exactly with the same amounts in the operations layer this um, on the same accounts but just wise just the other way around good so of course here as well depreciation straight line and the important thing here the reversal value model needs to be in the posting layer operations. So we have totally two in the operations layer and we have just one in your local layer. Good, let's move on with the derived value models. So as I said, so first of all, first of all, we just need to think, well, okay, which value models and should be reversed at what transaction types. Um, I'm actually normally using just some kind of posting type, so I'm not going to, for example, just I'm just rarely going to set up kind of depreciation adjustments or um, acquisition adjustments because it is, in the end, normally not needed at least in switzerland it is the case that it is normally not needed because if you want to just make um, new, new, um, an additional acquisition we're just going to add a second acquisition onto the same onto the same um, fixed assets move on with that um, therefore i'm just going to use here the acquisition the depreciation then of course the disposal types with the netbook value and the profit and loss good so um as i said the um, set r lock so the reversal of the local the local gap should always be derived so that there should be always the reversal posting at the time when you're going to post um, in to the local value model which means nothing else than every posting type that you are using needs to be derived for the value model so always if you post something into the local layer so if you post an acquisition into the local layer the set r log should be automatically derived it is exactly the same here as well for the depreciation. It is also the same for the disposal, so disposal sale, and of course also the disposal scrap. And within the disposal, it also needs to have the netbook value, which needs to be derived, and of course the profit and the loss. Good. So as I said, value model set R lock, every posting type needs to be derived. And I'm just going to use those posting types. Therefore, it is actually already fine. In the US gap, of course, we want to um, derive also the acquisition. So if I'm going to make an acquisition, it should post exactly the same acquisition amount into the US gap, because in the end, just the depreciation is different. Also, the acquisition should is not different if you acquisit something then because you're going just to acquisit the exactly same amount at least that's quite that's the normal way of doing it good important is we are not going to derive the depreciation um, because the depreciation is of course different and you can do it in separate um, depreciation runs it could even be that you just want to um, post us gap quarterly or yearly or whatever and the local gap uh, monthly and uh, therefore you don't as you, you can't um, derive the depreciation all the other types should be derived um, as well so this means i'm going to add here disposal sale disposal scrap and the net book value and of course also the profit and loss brilliant so this is this is it with the setup of the value models good so now we need to assign the value models to the fixed asset groups. So this means nothing else. Each fixed asset always gets all three value models. So it means nothing else that you need to click on fixed asset groups, then on the fixed asset group, and then here on the bottom value models. And first of all, you just need to add, okay, at first let's start with local. So the local one is straight line, um, depreciation convention. So I'm just going to depreciate here always the full month for example if you just um, had it within one year within within a month uh, so it's going to depreciate the full month depreciation period so let's say here it has a service life of four years 
a group, a US, of course, posting layer operations. And I'm going to just use here a service life of five. Also, the set R lock is needed in the operations layer. And in the end, it doesn't matter at all what you are going to add in here. Um, you just need to add anything. Um, normally, I'm just saying use the same one as local because it is, it, oops, it is the clearest one. Um, it is most, it is clear if you use it just the same way um, as the local one because it is going to reverse it. But in the end, since the depreciation here is also derived, you can actually also add here whatever you want. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter because it is always going, going to derive, derive it and it's going to um, use exactly the same amount as in the local one in the end. Which means actually in the end also that if you would have um, different kind of local value models because you would have, for example, degressive, degressive 35%, degressive depreciation to 40% and so on. Um, it doesn't matter. You just need to have one reversal one reversal value model and not for each local value model um, one. So one is sufficient. I actually leave it this way, actually, yeah, because then you see that AX is going to do it correctly. Good. Perfect. So we um, did almost everything. Fixed asset locations. Who cares? Good. Okay. Um, of course, the posting profiles are not yet in. Um, yeah, so this means nothing else, then we just need to set it up. We are, go we are going to do it step by step. So this means nothing else, then I'm going to, to add. No, at first I'm going to create the fixed asset. Makes more sense. Good, so um, I'm just going to click here on new. I'm choosing here the fixed asset group, so MCH. I'm going to use here my first machine. Um, location, who cares? Did I add it? No, I didn't. Okay, so um, yeah, there are quite a lot of informations available. Important is in here, if you're using financial dimensions, that you're going to add it in here. I'm actually not even sure that if I add it, if it's necessary, but I think so. Good, so I just added here in the end, just a financial dimension on them. As you saw, um, it retrieved, of course, the default values. You could override it in here if you want to. If you don't want to, you can just leave it as it is. So we have already the fixed asset created, but of course, not yet acquired. So we can now actually move on with adding the posting rules for the acquisition. So means nothing else than, um, yeah, I go here to the fixed asset posting profiles. Um, yeah, before you create the fixed asset, you need to have um, the posting profile, of course, and also add it to the fixed asset parameters. But yeah, good. So um, let's start with the acquisition. So um, the rule is, in the end, in the, in the acquisition or in all the posting rules, that you are always going to add the exact basically um for mm, so it doesn't matter let's start with lock local good so i'm i'm always doing it on group so i'm say here well okay value model local from the fixed asset group machines is going to post onto the main account fixed assets makes sense Okay, since we are going to um, since we are going to post the acquisition uh, the acquisition over a vendor invoice in this case, I'm just going to use here kind of the dummy account in the end because um, as soon as you're using another subledger to make the acquisition, so the vendor for example, the offset account would would be automatically vendor and it's it won't be from the fixed asset. Of course, if you're going over um, bridging accounts, so kind of current investment project account, um, yeah, and if you're doing the acquisition here over a fixed asset journal, then of course you just need to add here the correct offset account, which is for example, uh, the CIP account or, or whatever. Good, now the logic of setting it up is always, also setting it up for the set or lock value model. So in the end, just the reversal of local is 
nothing else. And I know it looked kind of strange here at the acquisition, but it is always the other the other way around. So if you have here 9995 in the offset account, you're going to add here the 9995 into the main account. There is just one difference, the fixed asset account. Always if the fixed asset account is um, available here, you're also going to use the 99995 account. Because we are using instead of the set of the fixed asset account directly, we are going to use here the 9995 instead. So as I said here, so the so the, the operations layer account for the fixed asset account is 99995. Good. So means nothing else than I'm just adding it in here. For the US value model, um, it is always exactly the same posting as in local, so exactly the same way. But here as well, if as soon as the fixed asset account is used, you're going to use the 99995 as well. So in the end, we have here just the posting 995 against 9995 again. Good. So this is actually a setup of the uh, acquisition posting. So this means nothing else than, um, yeah, let's let's have a look at it. So let's make an acquisition. I already created the vendor and also the journal. So I'm just going to post it here over um, a purchase invoice journal. And I'm going to lines. And I'm choosing the vendor. Also test, test. Let's say 1000 and I'm going to post it directly onto my first machine without any sales tax, of course. And I'm going to just quickly check it. Um, uh, I don't see it here. I'm just going to post it. Uh, um, okay, I have here kind of a rule you must. Okay, um, nine and nine and five, nine and five. Just one second. I just quickly need to check how the account structure is set up. The account structure set up is nine and nine and five. Cost central all values. Um, Okay, did I forgot to add? Um, okay, of course, I forgot to add it in the other value models, I guess. Yeah. Huh? Oops. Eh. Huh. Cost center, all values allowed, and once again, have a look at it. What the hell does he have? Just one, uh, it can be that. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, I'm just quickly going to check it. I think it's just kind of a... There we go. <clears throat> okay, now it, it, is, it is clear. It's clear. Um, yeah, so AX tries now, of course, to post also the account itself. So in the end, um, I have here in the account, which is where is no cost center in the end. And... In the offset account, there would be one, but he tries actually both. So also uh, this one here, uh, AX is going to try to post onto this uh, main account. Uh, 
Yeah, therefore, and because 99995, as I said, is always and at any time zero, therefore, this dummy account has to be necessarily in, um, in an account structure where is just where you just have a main account without any financial dimension yeah so either any any kind of financial dimension or of course um, allow blank values but i like it more just have to have um, no financial dimensions there because uh, it is definitely absolutely unnecessary to have it because um the value is always zero good and now if i post it right now i hope it already activated it yeah perfect yeah post it great Okay, also, those are just the error from before. Good, so it is posted right now. So we're just going to track the posting. So if I go here to inquiries and voucher, um, before I'm going there, um, what do we expect? So we actually made the acquisition, as I said, both layers are um, now, also should show in the end now 1000, sorry, not both layer, but um, both views. So because we made an acquisition over 1000 in the local accounting, we should have 1000 and also in the US gap accounting, we should have 1000 because we just made the acquisition of 1000. Good. So let's have a look at the voucher itself. So how it looks like always have a look in here because this is now important, the posting layer. So what is the posting? So in the local, in the local gap, we have here 1000 in in the fixed asset and then of course against the vendor in the operations layer so not the view but the layer um, he just posted in out in out on the 995 account which means nothing else and it looks like this good so now um, as I said what do we have in the view so we have in the end in the local accounting we have 1000 in the only operations, so the difference between local and the US gap, we have, of course, zero um, in total. And in the US gap, we should have 1,000 as well, because operations you always current plus operations, which is 1,000 plus 1,000 minus 1,000 plus 1,000 minus 1,000 is equal to 1,000. And on the vendor, of course, as well, 1,000, because 1,000 plus nothing is 1,000. Good. Let's have a look at it. So um, let's just have a quick look at the trial balance. So let's say I want to see it from first of till, yeah, this way. Good. So in the current layer, we have here 1000 closing balance and on the vendor we have you know, 11,000, but there are just some other postings, but here just 1000. Good. If we, if we change it now to operations so us gap view means nothing else and we should see as well 1000 on the fixed asset so let's have a look at it and we see 1000 on the fixed assets and in addition we have here this dummy account which is showing a closing balance of zero this account is actually not shown if i switch back to current so then we don't see here this account um, the only operations, which is the difference, should show zero in the end, so a zero closing balance. So let's have a look at it. And of course, we don't have any fixed asset account. And here, this one is showing as well, just zero. Uh, just switch, quickly switch it back here now to current. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, this was the acquisition. So we made an acquisition of one fixed asset. So let's move on. So let's add now the posting rules for um, the depreciation. So it means nothing else than we are going back to the posting profiles. Of course, to the posting type depreciation. And in here, we are doing the same. We are adding at first the local value model. We are going to say, well, the machine, the group's machine should post, of course, um, the main account should be 1509. So the accumulated depreciation account uh, PS, it 
doesn't it does not mean that if you add here the 1509 in the main account that it will be on debit side uh, it is always actually um, just the posting type in the end so the main posting type which is in here the balance sheet account so the, the, the accumulate depreciation so of course the depreciation will be posted on credit side on the um, on the um, accumulated depreciation yeah and the offset account then of course the depreciation account Good. Now, again, exactly the same rules. So for the set R lock, we are going to add exactly the same, exactly the opposite posting of the local value model. Just if there would be the balance sheet account, there would be the 99995. Do we have the balance? Uh, do we have the fixed asset account in here? We don't. Therefore, we are adding here exactly the same um, posting, but just the other way around. US one, so the second layer itself is always exactly the same as the local as the local value model, just if there would be the fixed asset account available, which isn't, therefore we're just adding here this posting logic. Great. So um means nothing else, then we can now run the fixed asset depreciation of my fixed asset. So um let's go to journals and to the fixed assets. Um, yeah, the journals are unfortunately already created, but just quickly show the setup. So I create, you need to create two different kind of um, fixed asset journals. One which is fixed asset current, so for the local layer type post fixed assets, voucher series, you can use whatever you want, um, or you can create one. And important is here that it is going to post into the current layer. You need to create a second um, journal type FAO for example fixed assets operations or US gap um, also post fixed assets any kind of voucher series and important the layer has to be operations great so let's start with the local depreciation so you always need to do two depreciation runs of course in this case I'm going as at this point I'm going to post the uh, local depreciation so I'll go to lines and proposals and depreciation proposals. I'm saying here until end of this month, of course. Uh, you don't need to select, of course, anything in here normally, but um, I just want to actually depreciate my fixed asset. So, okay, good. I click on OK and AX calculated now the depreciation. So, uh, in the end, I think on this one I had 48 or 60, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just calculated the 1000 divided by the number of, divided by the number of the depreciation periods. Good. Um, test. Good. Okay. So let's post it. Good. Okay. So now let's think about what do we expect? So, of course, we expect here that the 20.83 20 are here on credit side. And then here on the depreciation, then, of course, on debit side for the local accounting. Um, what should have happened or what amount should we see now in the U.S.? accounting we also need to remember we didn't post the depreciation yet so therefore the depreciation should should still be zero so in the us gap it should still show um, a fixed asset amount in total or net book value amount so this minus this of 1000 because there was no depreciation done for us gap yet therefore as i said just the set r log value model is always reversing here this posting with exactly the same amounts. Uh, AX did nothing else than he should post here on debit side. So it's just the reversal actually of this posting. So the accumulated depreciation is here on debit side reversed and the depreciation should also be reversed here on this side. So let's check it. So let's go here to inquiries and to the voucher. And as you can see, he did it exactly the way as we expected it. In the current layer on credit side, he has the he has on the accumulated depreciation account here the 2083 on debit side here and in the operations layer the exact opposite posting which means now nothing else than we already have a different amount because in us gap we still have 1000 um, fixed asset amounts within the 115 accounts and in the local um, accounting not anymore so let's have a look at it in the trial balance so this means 
Let's go to general lecture and to the trial balance. Let's have a look at current. So current we have here um, 1000 minus 20.83, so in total 900 and something. And at the same time we have here on the depreciation here the amount of 2083. Let's have a look at the operations. So US gap view. Let's update it. So we have in the fixed assets, we have still 1000. We have a closing balance of the accumulated depreciation of zero, which is correct because we didn't run the depreciation yet. And therefore we also have here on the depreciation zero. Yeah, so exactly the way how we did it and how we want to see it. Uh, now, of course, if we would now switch here to only operations, what would we see? We would see the difference. So we should see in the end um, on this account here on the depreciation, we should see a closing balance of minus 20.83 and we should see here, here on the accumulated depreciation of plus 20.83. So let's quickly check it, only operations, update and yeah. So just the difference, so also exactly the way how we have it in here. Great, um, so I switch it back to current just for the next time then. Great, so we are now going to do in a second run the depreciation for US gap. So again, journal fixed assets, you click on you, you choose here the FAO, um, so the fixed asset operations. You click on lines and you make proposals and depreciation proposals. Good, I select here again just my fixed asset. Now, um, just a recommendation from my side. Um, it is more secure uh, if you are going to add in here, so in the field value model, exclamation mark set R lock, which means nothing else than in it he is not going to uh, add this kind this this depreciation for the set R lock. Um, if you do it the way I did, I don't need this filter because um, the set R lock is already depreciated or already yeah, already depreciated because it was derived from the local value model but if you would just run both before posting the local the local one um it, it would appear in here you would end up in an error um but it is definitely you should do it this way um basically always because it makes definitely that it is yeah it is more secure if you say never go to uh, make a proposal from for the value model set R lock. Good, I click on OK, 30th June, and I say OK, and we have here 1167. I'm going to post it as well. And what do we expect? Well, of course, we expect now that we have um, a total depreciation in the US gap of um, the 1167. So we just expect here just this posting that on the accumulated depreciation in the operations layer that he's going to reduce the um, the uh, net book value or he's going to yeah he's going to post an accumulated depreciation here of 1167 and that he's posting it against the depreciation uh, which ax of course did this way operations layer on credit side accumulated depreciation on debit side the depreciation account good what does it mean now or what do we see always remember um, us gap is always current plus operations layer so we see now in the local accounting still 1000 minus 2083 so 970 979.17 and we see in the operations layer, oh, I'm sorry, in the operations view. So in US gap, we see 1000 minus, um, minus 20.83 plus 20.83, so still 1000, minus 11.67, so 900, 988.33. And on the depreciation account, of course, we see locally, we should see 20.83. And from a US perspective, you should see 20.83 minus 20.83 plus 11. Point, plus 11.67. So we should see a total depreciation of 11.67. So let's check it. Um, let's go back, no, not to lines, but let's go back to the general ledger and to common and to the trial balance. Um, 
current, of course, didn't change at all. We still have those three amounts in here. So still 20.83 here and here. If we switch into the operations view, so if you want to see US gap, we see 1000, we see minus 11.67 um, and on the depreciation, we see 11.67. So exactly what we would expect because we just depreciated 11.67. Um, now, what do we see in the difference? So, um, as in the difference layer, so it is, well, nothing else than, well, we depreciated uh, locally 20.83, uh, 20 um, but we de depreciated only 11.67 um, from, um, from US gap. So, in the end, there is a difference of 9.16. So, we should, in the end, see just on credit side here, the 9.16, 9 and here on debit side. So we would actually expect to see totally wrong what I did. We expect in here, this and here on, oops, and here then on credit side. So um, one second, let's just make this one here better again. So this means nothing else. This means nothing else than let's have a look at it. So um, we just switch here the view now to only operations. And then we see here on the accumulated depreciation on debit side, the 9.16. And we see on the depreciation on credit side, 9.16. So in the end, just the difference, just the difference. So actually just this one here. Yeah, in the end, just the difference between the local accounting and the US gap accounting. Good. So let's quickly close these kind of things. So um, yeah, just quickly close everything. Okay, of course, also in the subledger reporting, um, we have now in the fixed assets um, on the value model local, we have the 979.17. So in the end, just where where the depreciation was 20.83. And we have 988.33 in the US, so where you just depreciated the 11. Um, the set R lock value model is actually just here has, has always the same netbook value as the local one, but it's important you always need to exclude it from everywhere. Um, I'm also going to show how to set up the detailed view on fixed assets. So it is, but in the end, just from any kind of reporting from the fixed assets or any kind of detail view on fixed assets, uh, you always just need to exclude the set R lock because it is totally redundant and not used or not needed. Good. Um, this was it so far from part one. Um, of course, the more interesting part will then be how to set up the um, scrapping of the fixed asset and, of course, also the selling of the fixed asset. But this I'm going to show you in the second part of um, how to use a second layer um, within the fixed assets. In the second part as well, then I'm going to show you how to make some normal general ledger journal postings which are different um, between the local accounting and the group accounting um, or the US gap accounting. Great. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you enjoyed it up to now and um, see you in uh, part two. <laughs>